Hey, my name is Scott. If this is your first time to the channel, I am a type 1 diabetic. I'm also a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. If you're looking for tips, tricks, product reviews for diabetes, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be coming out with new content all of the time. All right, so I had a Libre that was on about day 13, 14, getting close to expiration, maybe about 12 hours left. And I wanted to put on a new sensor in the meantime so I could compare the two readings. Now, I've always known that early on sensors are not as accurate as they are later on. We can even look at a study that was done with a Libre um, where they did day by day accuracy. This wasn't the Libre 2, this was one of the earlier models, but the idea still stands that early on a sensor is not as accurate as later on in the sensor lifetime. So day one is not gonna be as accurate as day maybe 10 or 11. Um, generally, as the days go on, they become more accurate. And this is true whether you're using the Dexcom or you're using the Libre. So what I wanted to do is actually test this out and see how different those readings were. So the way that I did it was I did a finger stick because that's still your most accurate way to get your glucose. And if you ever have a question, you take your CGM reading, your Libre, your Dexcom, and you feel like maybe you don't feel like you're 60 or 50 or whatever the blood sugar is, um, go ahead and do a finger stick. Make sure that that is indeed accurate. It's still the best way to do it. So that's what I did here. So I did a finger stick. The finger stick showed me that I was 103. Now, when I compared that to the day one Libre, the one that I just had put on, it just passed its one hour warm up time, it showed me that I was 130. So that was off by 27 points, which is a pretty significant amount. Then when I checked with my day 14 Libre, which only had a few hours left, you can see the blood sugar was actually 113, only off by 10 points, which is very minimal. So you see this big difference here. And now one thing that I wanna add is, well, this may not seem that significant. I also made sure to do this at a time where my blood sugars were pretty stable, pretty steady. As we know, if your blood sugars are spiking high fast or they're dropping down fast, these numbers could be off by even more than that. So this was at a pretty stable time. And even when things were stable with my blood sugars, pretty steady across the board, there was still a difference of 27 points with the sensor that I had just put on. Now, why does this happen? Something called insertion trauma. Basically, you took the, the Dexcom, the Libre, you put it in your arm, there's a needle that goes in to get that flexible catheter in there, and that causes trauma to the area. You have an inflammatory response, you have an immune response from this foreign body that's um, placed in your arm or your abdomen, wherever you're using it. And this creates a little bit of problem for the readings within the first few hours or so. Again, this is something that kind of stabilizes over time. Obviously, the inflammation goes down and this goes back to normal and your blood sugars will have more, uh, have better accuracy as time goes on. But initially, at least for the first few hours, sometimes even up to the first day, this can cause some inaccuracies in the blood sugar levels. So then the question is, is there anything you can do to prevent this? Now, the companies are working on this. I know Dexcom is definitely, with their with their next sensor, it's going to be down to a 30-minute warm-up time, meaning that they've probably gotten this down to a point where the blood sugars are accurate enough where you only need 30 minutes. Um, so I know they're getting better, but what can you do right now? What can you do to improve this um, this inaccuracy early on with the CGM. So there's a couple ways. I'll tell you about the one I use personally, and then I'll tell you another one that I've heard from other people that they use and see, you know, which one you would prefer to do. So what I do is I put on my CGM. I put on my Libre before I go to bed. Because when I'm sleeping, I don't have to continuously check throughout the day. I don't have to plan my insulin doses for meal time. I don't have to make corrections generally, unless I'm having a really high, uh, big high or big low overnight. But generally, most of the time when I'm sleeping, I'm not too concerned about my blood sugars. Obviously, you know, like those severe highs or lows, which I generally don't have. But for the most part, there's not a lot going on that I need these specific numbers. So I try to put my CGM on prior to bedtime. I go to sleep. By the time I wake up in the morning, it's been about 10 hours or so. The numbers have kind of settled down. Things are a lot more accurate than they were before I went to bed. That's my method. Another method that other people use, and I'm not going to necessarily say from a healthcare provider standpoint that I necessarily endorse this because I don't know if it creates any problems, but another thing that a lot of people use is something called soaking the sensor. So what you can do, you have a sensor on that you're currently using and say it has about 12 hours left. You can put on a new sensor on the other arm and just don't scan it yet. Let it just sit on the arm. Let things settle down with that inflammation I talked about, that insertion trauma. Give it about 12 hours to kind of let things level off. Continue using the other one, and then when the other one expires in about 12 hours, you can go ahead and scan the new one. So that's one way you can kind of prevent a lot of these errors that happen um, just by putting one on, not scanning it, continue to use the other one until it expires. And then after about 12 hours have passed, things should be pretty normal. The blood sugars should have leveled off and you can start using the new one. So that's called soaking the sensor. A lot of people seem to use that and seem to have a lot of luck with it. 
it's not the method that I use, but I could see why it does work and I could see why a lot of people use it. So those are the methods that I wanted to go over to kind of help you with those problems. Let me know if you have anything else that maybe you can suggest or anything that you're using personally. And thank you so much for watching the video. Please go ahead and subscribe and like the video. It's going to be coming out with new content all the time.